Hey guys, and welcome to the first episode of The Entertainment Desk, where we talk all things movies, TV, Broadway, anything, games, theme parks, anything entertainment. Here, I have Hannah Listis. Hey guys! <laughs> and today we're talking about the best Pixar movie literally ever. Of all time. Do you think it's the best Pixar movie? A hundred percent. How many times have you seen it? Like, 1,600. 1,600? Yeah. You're like, almost as much as me. <laughs> I've seen more. Sorry, sis. <laughs> She's like, five times a day. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. I watched it. I watched it at your house. We yeah, watched we it. watched it twice. <laughs> In the same, like, as soon as it, we started playing it, yeah. we were like, once it was over, we're like, what else should we watch? And we were like, Coco. And we would just hit the restart button, started yep. watching all over again. Knew all the songs. Oh my god, the songs are the best. Love it. Literally. It's like, just, I can listen to them all day. I mean, you do, in the car. You I jam literally, out. I all literally, <laughs> that's all I listen to, the soundtrack, because it's so good. Yeah. So, if you guys don't know, Coco is a Pixar movie about little boy Miguel, who loves music, but his family has banned music. Um, it's about the Day of the Dead, Dia de los Muertos. Um, yeah. Yeah, basically, uh, Miguel has to keep his love for music a secret. Um, he plays his guitar and he tries to join a talent show, but his grandmother is the main one who's kind of against it, and they just want him to pursue a career at their shoe family shoe business to make shoes. And um, he tries to join a talent show, doesn't have a guitar because nope. it got ruined. <laughs> so then he ends up going on this trek into the actual realm of Dia de los Muertos and finds out a lot about his family history. Mm-hmm. And um, through that, learns an appreciation not only for music that he already had, but family and mm-hmm. what it means to, you know, have a family, appreciate your family. Mm-hmm. And um, learn the value of that. Yeah, I think the celebration of Day of the Dead is like an actual, like, I don't know, beautiful kind of holiday, right? Yeah. It's a good tradition, I think it really is. I think, like, celebrating, like, I don't know, like, the souls of, like, the family members that have been there with you, like, through your whole life. I think that's really beautiful. I think it's also something that has become... It's like a holiday that they look forward to because it's beautiful in the sense of you're appreciating the life of that loved one and their memory is there rather than, you know, grieving and thinking like, oh, this was such a tragic, horrible thing. It's like, obviously you're going to go through that period of grieving and whatnot, but appreciating that life and remembering them and, you know, having the ofrenda up and Mm -hmm. those offerings that they do and like the sugar skulls and it's something that you know with death is oftentimes marked with really dark colors of like black and you know when you go to Mm -hmm. a funeral everyone's wearing black but it's kind of like a celebration yeah whereas funeral dia de los muertos is known for such vibrant colors yeah festivities there's dancing mm-hmm. there's they leave gifts for they, their loved yeah, ones it's candles the bread that they make the flowers are like mm-hmm. intricate colors and it's just a celebration and appreciation and i think a lot of us can learn from you know that type of holiday and that culture of learning to celebrate life instead mm-hmm. of worrying or always mm-hmm. being in a sense of like fear of death yeah yeah i think that's that is really beautiful um so for people who don't know actually like the details about Dia de los Muertos, it's usually celebrated around when we celebrate Halloween. Um, so I think that I'm pretty sure the 31st is like the first day of Dia de los Muertos and then it goes to November 2nd. Um, so that whole weekend, you know, those three days is mm-hmm. kind of like a celebration. Um, so, um, so some info, it originated thousands of years ago with the Aztecs. Um, now it's, brought in a lot of I think like Christianity into it Mm -hmm. um I mean which is fine it happens you know religion and stuff um so I think it's also Catholics too because mm -hmm. a lot of them are they also are Catholic yeah I think Catholics they celebrate All Saints Day which is their version kind of you know Mm -hmm. like like remembering the lost souls and stuff like that um yeah so a little bit about it so the marigolds are actually the orange flowers mm-hmm. that 
um, they put for their loved ones so they can have, like, you know, kind of like a guide. Like a bridge. A bridge, a guide, a s- mm-hmm. guide for the souls to the, you know, the, the realm where, of actual living. Yeah, yeah, so they can, like, be with their families mm-hmm. kind of thing. That's what it's mm-hmm. um, meant for. Um, it also decorates the afrendas, which is kind of like an altar that... Um, As, like, of offerings. To offerings, and they put pictures yeah. of their fami- their, you know, past family members, mm-hmm. past friends, anyone who was meaningful in their life. Right, kind of candles, anyone that they actually want to be able to cross over back into the realm on Dia de los Muertos. That's mm-hmm. the one kind of thing that's highlighted in the movie is that it's kind of like a TSA checkpoint that they kind of, you know, make fun of yeah. on that part. You of, have your photo Yeah, if your photo is up by someone, they run you through the system and your picture <laughs> comes up and you're cleared to go into the realm of, you know, like the actual living. Yeah. Um, and so if your picture is not put up, then it's kind of like either you weren't remembered or you weren't, or you were forgotten. And it's a very kind of sad portion because there are people that are, you know. Forgotten. Forgotten. Yeah. And you're kind of like. Oh no! I want everyone up right. in my friend like so that way people are. <laughs> I'm remembered. about to make it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because you want people to like. I don't know. There's. I don't know. I guess there's nothing worse than passing over to the other life and then nobody remembering you. Yeah, and your you're memories. forgotten. Yeah. And so it, that they do shed some like funniness and light on that, but it is something that you know is a very like big issue in the movie about you know forgetting and one mm-hmm. of the main characters, Hector, is. That's his whole dilemma in the movie, mm-hmm. so. Yeah. Um, so I think this movie brought a lot of importance mm-hmm. um, just to the community, just to anybody who watched the movie. Yeah. Um, like. Yeah, I think that's one issue that, that's why I think I liked Coco so much is because with Hollywood and these movies, there's a lot of these issues right now that we're seeing in society about underrepresentation of certain races, ethnicities, and, mm-hmm. you know, you have a lot of people that are criticizing um just majority of it all being a, a white cast member or you mm-hmm. know what i mean Some yeah. stuff like that yeah. with main major characters are all white and so having a movie that is solely based on expanding on mexican culture and just latino culture and having all these you know hispanic members in the movie um i think not only is it a source of education for people who aren't familiar with the culture but it's also a source for kids who are of that heritage and our culture and are like mom dad like it's That's a me. Disney movie yeah, and, and it's I, yeah right. culture is in it it's mm-hmm. like shown i think it brings a lot of people together I yeah think a lot of families too i think that you know for me i can relate to that really hard because i'm you know not from America. I came to America from Europe when I was, you know, really little. Mm -hmm. And I just remember growing up and always feeling like kind of ashamed of my cultural things that I did because like nobody else did them. So like I was always like afraid about kids coming over from school over to my house because like the food wasn't the same Mm -hmm. or things that my mom did and said weren't the same as other moms. So I was always living this kind of like and not yeah I was like embarrassed of like who I was and so for kids to be able to see like a Disney movie which is such a major I mean that's Disney Disney, like everyone knows Disney to be able to say like oh my goodness like my abuelita like the chunkla you know like the sandal like you know because and things like that or like seeing the houses with the architecture of the roofs and like seeing you know that in you know those kind of cultures and there's people that have small local business you know Mm -hmm. like the whole family shoe business that's such a thing that like you know there's markets and stores that people Mm -hmm. have owned and family operated and so maybe you know not everyone is gonna have parents that are lawyers and doctors Mm -hmm. and things like that and Mm -hmm. kids are gonna grow up feeling like I don't know, not it's just a shame that, like, oh, my God, like, my dad makes shoes for a living. But, like, having that highlighted in this movie is, yeah. like, these kids can look at that and be, like, oh, my goodness, there's yeah. people out here that and are, I like, And I think me. that's also the importance of what they made, the, the importance of family, you mm-hmm. know? So, yeah. like, you always have your family around you. There's no reason, you know, like, you right. feel shame, mm-hmm. nothing, you know. And also, like, the biggest thing about Miguel is, at first, his family doesn't accept his talents and his mm-hmm. wishes and, what, because, he and what he wants to do yeah. but at the end everything is kind of sorted out and it's that main idea of your family's got your back so mm-hmm. even though in the beginning they weren't very like liking of the whole music thing he once they went on this journey together and saw that 
it wasn't really all about the music. It was just about their family. Yeah, they learned and they, then yeah, you know. and he was able to then pursue, and they were able to um, live this whole life of of um, like having the <laughs> um, having the music and stuff. Yeah. Um, I also think that. The cultural things that are brought up in the movie are huge for people who aren't familiar mm-hmm. with Dia de los Muertos. Mm-hmm. Um, Frida Kahlo makes an appearance. Right, there's a lot of, like, known characters, mm-hmm. a lot of known, like, Mexican celebrities, yeah. a lot of Hispanic celebrities that are in that, that movie. That have made huge contributions to Mexican culture, art, and entertainment. I honestly applaud Disney. Like, yeah. I think the the directors and yeah. creators of Coco, they actually went to Mexico. Yeah, they did. And yeah. they, like, you know, sight saw, and they, like... Anything from, like, what the roof of the house is supposed to Literally, from, like, the like. people who lived yeah, in there. Yeah, the clothing, the traditional yes. clothing. Everything's handmade. Like, mm-hmm. the shoes, the guitars, mm-hmm. the... And then the um, mariachi bands. Exactly. Like, having that, like, mm-hmm. in the talent shows. And then, you know, just the colors. Oh, my God. The colors, they did Beautiful. such an amazing Beautiful. job at representing the colors. Because... That's exactly, like, if you're going to think of Dia de los Muertos, like, the one thing for me that Colorful. is colors. Like, yeah. such vibrant colors. Like, neon. And then the um the spirit animals, too. The, the um, alabrijes. Yeah, those. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, my God. Like, I want a pet. Like, right? I want one like that right away. Because their colors are just, they're neon, fluorescent. And then the... Beautiful. And then the... Like, what they represent, too. Yeah, and then the way guides. that they, they um portrayed what actually, like, the world of where the dead people live Beautiful. oh my goodness it looked like new york with like just these <laughs> lights and like mm-hmm. it was just like a very positive outlook on death and mm-hmm. crossing over into this other realm mm-hmm. i think which is another thing that disney did such a really good job at pinpointing and kind of talking about because with it being a disney movie like I specific like I know personally like that kids are always they already start they don't they might not understand what death is and mm-hmm. they might not get like the whole full but idea. This is a good. But this is a good starting point yeah. of kind of like learning to teaching kids about death and what it means to die and they all you know not everyone might believe that there is a life after death mm-hmm. or that everyone crosses over into this world. Yeah. But having these vibrant colors and showing this happiness yeah. and stuff, it kind of, you know, instills this idea of, like, it's not it's a not horrible bad. thing. Yeah. 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 And because um, kids are going to start being interested in topics like that. They're going to start asking about of things course, like death and what that means. And so this is a really good kind of, like, you know, one thing that I was thinking about was, like, you know, with a kid who loses a family pet Mm -hmm. like what do you kind of tell your child like when their best friend which was a dog like but then they see this like beautiful animal in coco that's these magnificent colors Colors, and it's like a helpful and like the way that they portray it like i think one of the characters even goes on to explain like how beautiful like the guide dogs are Mm -hmm. um you can explain these things to these children and show them like look like this is kind of what their life looks like right now and it's not all bad that you know, your family pet is gone. Kind of like, I think what a lot of people also, what Dia de los Muertos also portrays is that passing is not such a bad thing. Yeah. It's a natural occurrence. Mm-hmm. And it we happens should appreciate to... that the life was even Exactly, existed. exactly. And yeah. those skulls actually, um, the person who created them, he did it kind of saying like, we're all like underneath skulls, you know, mm-hmm. like, we're no different than right. the person next to you. Um, so I think that's, like, also, like, a beautiful meaning and, like, just yeah. the skulls and stuff like that. Yeah, no, I think things... <clears throat> I think also one thing that I read a lot about was the criticism that Coco faced with... I guess they were saying that it was appropriating the culture because they were trying to profit off of it with, like... Mm. I don't know, just, like, you know, merchandise and clothing and things yeah. like that. But I think that... Um, I don't think it was appropriating culture. No, I think at it all. was celebrating it. Was it was celebrating it. Yeah. And I think like how are you gonna start to educate and learn yourself if you're not, you know, watching movies or looking into things? And the main thing is that, you know, like you mentioned, the directors and the producers of the movie they actually took they their time. went yes. to these places. They it's made like sure they... it was authentic and yeah. Yeah. It's not like they just, like, bullshitted it, yeah. you know, and, like, just Googled, you know what I mean? Right. They actually went, did the study mm-hmm. in the city, did yeah. it themselves, literally got, like, Mexican musicians mm-hmm. to do the music. They tried to do, like, 
um, kind of like a soundtrack. I was reading um, an article about it. They try to do like a, a authentic. sound authentic soundtrack with Mexican tones you yeah. know, in it. So you yeah. can hear that in the soundtrack. And having the, the um, representation of the, um, what do they call it? I said it earlier, the mariachi bands mm-hmm, and stuff mm-hmm. and seeing what they're authentically dressed in and the guitars were like authentic Mexican guitars that they had. Um, I think that a big thing is like, you know, not everyone is going to have that accessibility to learning about Dia de los Muertos. They're not going to mm-hmm. have that accessibility to meeting a Mexican person that chooses because to how celebrate many, it. how much did you like learn about any other culture, you know, like in yeah. school? I don't think I even knew mm-hmm. a whole bunch about Dia de los Muertos until yeah. I saw Coco and actually mm-hmm. was interested in it. Yeah, like we, I think like the main thing you think of Dia de los Muertos, it's like a stereotypical thing, like the sugar skulls. And like mm-hmm. that's pretty much ev- what everyone yeah. kind of focuses on is like the sugar skulls, but doesn't understand the history of behind exactly. it. Exactly. So having things like, uh, you know, Coco didn't go all deep. It wasn't a history movie, but, but it got the it basis. It had the ofrendas, which are, you know, the idea of. It had the flowers. The it had flowers. The, it had the, I mean, music, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It had the and family sh- yeah the- and showing things mm-hmm. that are so important to that culture like music like family um and i think that is a good starting point for people to start gaining some interest in and learning about it and it. understanding mm-hmm. what it is another thing that you know you mentioned was like it started a long time ago with the aztecs and mm-hmm. i remember you know researching about how there's just kind mm-hmm. of like these people that are left now that are the actual like native you know, Aztecs or, yeah. like, the Mayans that are losing a lot of what their culture started yeah. on. They're losing their language, like, these authentic languages that are getting lost because yeah. people are just dying off and there's not education, there's no teaching. Mm-hmm. And so, you know... With, I think this movie sheds a lot of light on yeah, that and people know that, sparks hey, that it's interest. Here. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it kind of um, brings back that awareness that these are... The thousands and thousands of years ago, this is what, like, the foundation of all this was built on. Yeah. And people need to appreciate it, learn about it, educate themselves so that beautiful cultures like that don't just disappear. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's really important. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Overall, it was a great movie. Yeah. Um, Disney Would recommend watch. 10 out of 10. Yes. Um, and Disney just did a really good thing of kind of simplifying the concepts and keeping it very entertaining though at yeah. the same time yeah. but also pinpointing very important details also very emotional oh cry yeah I every cr- second literally i cried like three or four times in it <laughs> which like i think i cry most when i watch disney movies which sounds like a horrible thing but <laughs> there's just things that you know pull out your heartstrings that mm-hmm. they do a really good way of conveying those emotions and i think a lot of times when i'm re- <laughs> That's Scooter. <laughs> um, I feel like every time I watch a YouTube video um, about, like, Coco, mm-hmm. like, all the comments is, like, um, it'll say, good to see that my culture is represented. Yeah. Good to see that I can, like, my son, like, has a, what, like, a, he can see himself in Being the Being shown movie. in the yeah, movie. In the yeah, movie, and you know? his life is portrayed in there. And I think that... That's a huge thing that, you know, people should be able... That's why I think it was such a big hit is because, like, for the first time, there were these young kids that are coming from these cultures that are, like, seeing themselves and they're like, oh my goodness, you know? And it's so funny now that there's kids that aren't even of that culture that want Dia de los Muertos themed birthday parties. Right. And, like, and they're appreciating and they're teaching their parents about it and they're mm-hmm. like, well, this is our ofrenda mm-hmm. and, like, we're going to make one and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's a lot that parents can learn, you know, even though it is a, a movie that both adults and children can watch, which I think is amazing that it has that mm-hmm. versatility because, I mean, I enjoyed it and Loved I know it. that there's adults that have enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you know, like, kids are going to be kind of like the main audience because yeah, it is disney yeah. and so there's kids now that maybe there's parents that haven't watched the movie that have their kids educating them on these things yeah, and exactly. learning them and i think that's how those things kind of start and it just turns into a domino effect yeah. after that i would just hate for this like beautiful culture just to like you know vanish mm-hmm. you know it's yeah it's so pretty i'm ready for coco 2 to come out <laughs> <laughs> i don't even know if they're gonna make that but <laughs> about what um miguel grows up with his oh. wife and has a kid who something happened down the line yeah. mm-hmm. and goes into the world dead world of- sees his great great grandfather yeah. well not really because he got no because did hector does hector like 
Whatever. Maybe, maybe like Hector like comes back. It's alive? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's how it works. Some spell gets put. Something happens. Oh, yes. Um, But I think that it's just Dia de los Muertos and two is what they're going to call it. <laughs> um, yeah, speaking of Dia de los Muertos 2, two. Um, I read somewhere that Disney tried to make this movie like a long time ago mm-hmm. or something a, a, around Dia de los Muertos. And it was, I think, going to be called Dia de los Muertos. Um, but they just people thought that it was gonna come off like we said before appropriating the culture, kind of yeah. yeah not very you know mm-hmm. um not a lot of research into it mm-hmm. um but now they did it correctly so i guess yeah neat. and i like that they named it coco because you learn up it's coco is you know a character in the movie who doesn't get a lot of time like because she's not really talking and stuff but the whole idea like it just shows, like, with their elders and, like, the importance of ancestry and their yes. culture. Because this liter- none of this would have happened if it weren't for Coco. Exactly. Um, so I think all this surrounds her. And even though she doesn't have a really big speaking role in it, it all comes back down connects, to her. Yeah, yeah, to her, everything. Everything. And it just shows, like, the importance of appreciating elders and ancestry, which are things that are huge in this culture, mm-hmm. is, like, and appreciating family, like, that's the biggest thing is yeah. that family is your number one and I think also it was it was different it was something different that they did that um I don't know kind of just it was the first time for me that I thought Disney had some real life applications yes to yeah, they things had real life are, characters like yeah real culture if there were applications that people normal people could yeah. just like you know relate to it and be like oh wow this is like Dia de this is like Coco this is like yeah even if they don't celebrate Dia de los Muertos they could get that thought of oh family Mm -hmm. you know right I have have a family and family is important and they're gonna support me exactly and it's appreciating and then it's also just like back to the whole premise of you know death and crossing over and Mm -hmm. that type of Mm -hmm. stuff just kind of like explaining that and and having it in a shown in a very positive sense and yeah. not something that's like horrible or tragic or... yeah i agree so uh what's your favorite pixar movie coco confirmed coco's best pixar movie coco ever. stands for confirm confirm <laughs> <laughs> wait wait can we just talk about the animation on mama coco's like everything everything yeah. like just yeah her like old lady wrinkles, wrinkles like the hair the you can see parts like hair just like flyaways like yeah. just sticking out i mean everything and then the the details on the dogs the the, the animals mm-hmm, mm-hmm. oh the, the um alabrijes. yes the yeah. details on that is amazing beautiful um the details on the people the that are dead that are in the, yeah. the oh realm, the skeletons the skeletons oh my goodness like the drawings i think this everything. is like Pixar, like, you mm-hmm. have Pixar, you know, which is amazing already. Yeah. You have, what, like, Ratatouille, you know, Toy Story, amazing yeah. movies. Um, And then they come out with Coco, and it looks this beautiful. Mm-hmm. I cry. Just just when I look at the, like, the front picture of the DVD oh, case, yeah. I cry. Literally, yeah. Because <laughs> it's, literally, it's just, like, the colors, like, I just, I just, that's one thing I can't, will never get over. Mm-hmm. It's just, mm-hmm. like, how beautiful they are, the vibrancy of it. And it's, l- the colors are this whole metaphor of <clears throat> vibrant life. And mm-hmm. life, at one point, for that person, was vibrant. And it should be remembered. And they should be um, not forgotten about. And um, there was one more thing I wanted to bring up. When she threw her chancla. Uh, no, that's not <laughs> one. That was funny. Though. When... He wasn't hungry and his grandma made him eat food. That's my grandma. 100%. Oh, about just like kids, you can see what kind of impact it had on children. Like, mm-hmm. I just remember, especially now with Halloween coming up, there's so many kids that are wanting to dress, dress like up Miguel. like Miguel yes. or Mama Coco. Yeah. And oh my God, I've seen that. Yeah, there's little kids that are like wanting to dress up like these mm-hmm. characters. And the, you can see that like the message of what Coco is about really got to these kids and they they understood it they did um and i think disney did a great job of ha- you know some things like they could relate that are very you know complex like yeah. topics like culture and religion and belief systems and all that stuff that are very like 
you know, to Complex this day, sometimes. there are adults that can't even yeah. talk about that. That there's Disney now who's kind of simplified these things. And, and kids are, like, understanding. Are understanding and, like and are appreciating, appreciating. and learning about mm-hmm. these things. And and it's just, like, they can you you can only do anything but appreciate a movie like this. You of can't course. argue it. You can't be, like, you can't try to bring up your own religious right? beliefs or no. anything. You can just appreciate something exactly. like that. Exactly. I think I that... They did a great job at portraying that. 100%. I even think my roommate, actually, her little cousin is Miguel. Yeah. For no, Halloween. So I just that's rem- so adorable. I remember, like, when I watched it, I was like, I need to go and buy everything that is related to Coco. Mm-hmm. Goes on Amazon, Disney.com, the shop right away, buys everything. everything. But everything sold out. So plot twist, pranked. Yeah. Can't but that also anything. shows you the importance, <laughs> like, that everything's already sold out yeah. is crazy. Yeah. That movie's insane. I think they're changing the... Um, you know Epcot, uh-huh. um, the the Mexico, because you know the they have the countries. The yeah. Mexico, they're I think I've heard they're changing that ride to a be Coco, Coco themed. Yeah, something. that yeah, would be that amazing. Would be cool. Are you kidding me? I would buy a ticket just to go there. No, I remember saying like, I when Coco came out and I watched it, I was like, I just need a ticket to get in Disney just to go to the gift shop. Like, <laughs> I don't even need to go to the rides. Like, I don't want to explore the park. So I was, like, trying to find a way if, like, they'll let me in just to go to the gift shop and then, like, leave because <laughs> online everything was sold out. Yeah. So. Love that for yeah. us. Um, also, I really want the Coco Mini Ears. I don't know if you've seen them. I have. They're really pretty. Yeah. They're, like, black and they have, like, little flowers on them. Mm-hmm. They're so cute. They're very cute. Cute. I feel like they're gonna be sold out right away. Mm-hmm. Oh, a hundred percent. Anything that the they've made stuffed animals that are sold out. Sold out. They. I really want a Dante. They've done the hoodie. I don't know if you saw the hoodie. Yeah, that like zips face? up and it's Miguel's face. Yes. Yeah. Um. I want that. They only have kid sizes. I will squeeze into it. it yeah, literally. <laughs> like I've never lost weight. I will lose weight for that though. <laughs> uh, me and running. Uh. <laughs> Dieting mm. for Coco, okay, yes. yeah, <laughs> but yeah. but yeah, overall, great movie. Would recommend it if you haven't watched it. Please watch it. I know for me, it took me a while to watch it, I don't know why. Yeah. And then, same, honestly, same. I didn't understand, like, I had heard such great reviews about it. Um, and it, I think it was when it came out on Netflix that I watched it, same, just because, like, I was browsing one day didn't have anything to watch and i watched it and i cried and then i watched it again literally um and then it makes you want to like you're, you're singing along the songs and it's like it, it makes it it, it teaches you spanish too okay <laughs> right? like yeah I, I just feel like after watching that i want to immerse myself more in that culture and just learn more i think it's so beautiful and just the song amazing. singing along to them mm-hmm. and i'm sure that there's people out there that are proud to like hear people that are of their culture or are singing along to those songs mm-hmm. and they have the authentic beats and sounds of right. their culture and it's like cool and like the instruments mm-hmm. like it's all Mexican yeah. you know? and there's kids out there that are like now appreciating their music and their heritage a lot more now because there's other people that aren't that don't look like them or yeah. aren't from their you yeah. know countries and they're like oh, well they're singing along so now I can appreciate it and now I can sing too so yeah that's really beautiful mm-hmm. I'm I about agree. to cry right now just thinking yeah about scooter's movie. crying <laughs> scooter's my dog scooter also loves coco scooter has a sombrero and a <gasps> guitar like miguel he does. courtesy of me yeah and it's his favorite costume ever and he's oh, also he's walking over scooter here. is gonna be miguel for halloween he's actually gonna be an alabrije because i have a dinosaur costume that's green oh so beautiful I'm gonna put with, that a sombrero. with a sombrero yeah so he'll be... fun fact um scooter's favorite food is Mexican Why food. Because he wants his favorite food. Because <laughs> he knows we're talking about him. And oh. Co- he loves Coco too. Yes. Who doesn't? Yeah. Literally, I ask everybody and that I meet it. if they watch no, Coco. No, and there's, uh, that's another thing you bring up that I think is really important. There are people that I've talked to that don't have an interest in Disney, Pixar, like they don't watch it, but that have watched Coco. Yeah. And are like, oh my goodness, this is the best thing. And it might be the only movie that they watch, but that they watched it and that they loved it and they like appreciated yeah. everything about it. Um, I think that's a huge idea. And that goes back to the real life applications that Coco has. I think it's the first movie that people that you know aren't huge disney fans or aren't really interested in it have watched and have liked very influential Mm -hmm. i think yeah um and for a movie that has such a great message and highlights such 
great culture i think that is the best thing that you can ask for is for it to get so much attention yeah um even from people who don't like disney or you know aren't really big fans of it Mm -hmm. yeah i agree 100 percent. i also think it's one of the first movies also like maybe like toy story Mm -hmm. is arguable but like that adults (laughs) can watch and enjoy and have some connection to it yeah because i feel like it involves everybody yeah it involves the family it involves like past Mm -hmm. like you know celebrities that have died that have impacted oh yeah having in so many ways like are yeah you know and having things like things like i think the whole frida kahlo thing like i remember watching i was like oh my god it's frida like it was a wrestler yeah yeah, i was like oh my god yeah i was just like sitting there i was like that is so cool and there's kids now that maybe didn't know about Frida Kahlo that mm-hmm. have heard her voice now and or have heard about her now yeah. that are like we'll maybe asking yeah. hey who's Frida Kahlo like who's that wants you know? to learn more right. about the culture yeah that's- and that's a, somebody that has contributed so much to mm-hmm. art um, I agree I feel like she also represented a lot of Mexican culture a lot of Hispanic culture a lot of women just powerful, powerful empowerment women. you know yeah which is something that right now with our society that we need. we need so but yeah that'll be a different topic yeah <laughs> a different oh, episode that's a whole nother realm <laughs> a whole nother so yeah. yeah but yeah so go watch coco if you don't shame on you shame on you <laughs> <laughs> just kidding well um yeah so thanks for listening also it's on netflix it's on netflix yeah so you don't even have to bot like if you have netflix just go go watch it go watch literally. it right it's gonna be the best moment of your life and i guarantee you're gonna want to watch it again and again and again and again and again and again you can pause this podcast because i know you're watching i mean yeah. listening sorry to go watch coco exactly and also make sure you listen to the soundtrack and like cc memorize every single word of every soundtrack and learn un poco loco in spanish yes and then when you're at work like us on break you're just listening to the playlist yeah. and singing your heart out and people are like mm, what's that and you're like coco you haven't heard about it then you educate and people. then they regret that they asked us. <laughs> right and now you've started an effect of educating people about culture and then they want to watch it and, and then, then they'll they educate, educate more and that's yes. how we learn about diversity and we learn to embrace diversity and we learn to embrace and learn about all these other cultures that aren't ours but are still beautiful yeah so wow what a that was so beautiful Mm -hmm. well thanks for listening watch out for a new episode we'll be out mid-november yeah hopefully um go watch coco yeah see you later bye guys so welcome to the first episode of the entertainment desk where we talk all things movies tv broadway anything games theme parks anything entertainment